two different levels. I'm sure there's way more than two different levels anyway, but just two that I'll talk about. When we talk about the soul, because we can't talk about reincarnation without talking about the soul. Otherwise, what is it that reincarnates? On the one hand, on the most deepest, fundamental, essence level, we're all one with the divine. There is no my soul and his soul and her soul. There's just the capital T, T, the, and capital S, soul, of which we are all a part, much like waves in the ocean. A wave looks like a wave. It looks like it's separate from the ocean temporarily. But it actually, even when it was going up, even when it was coming down, never stopped being part of the ocean. It's not that it's a figment of our imagination. It, it happened. The wave is there. But even when we call it a wave, it's actually still ocean. So on, on the deepest, most fundamental level, when we talk about the soul, even the idea of my soul or his soul or your soul, is not actually perfectly accurate. It would be like saying my wave and your wave and her wave, whereas we're actually all just part of the ocean. So that's, that's on the most fundamental basic level when we talk about the soul. And on that level, there's no sense of a soul going anywhere coming from anywhere, the soul just just is. That's when they say it's, it's never born, it never dies, nothing can injure it, nothing happens to it. Because regardless of waves that go up and down, the ocean is, nothing is. No wave is the beginning of the ocean or the end of the ocean. So that's, that's one level, like the deepest, most profound, level of the soul. When we talk about reincarnation, though, what we're talking about is that distinction of jivatma compared to atma. So atma being the soul, that capital S soul, that ocean of which we're all just waves. And then the jivatma being our own individual soul. We were talking, I think it was last night, it might have been the night before, about <laughs> the drops with the ocean. The drops merging back into the ocean. Oh, it was last night. The, the concept of this, I'll give it for you quickly because it helps understand this, is if you think about the ocean, the sun shines on the ocean. A little bit of water evaporates into a cloud. The wind carries the cloud a little ways. Some of the drops of rain fall high in the mountains. They come down as pristine Himalayan rivers. People pray to them. They catch one, do their arati. Other drops fall in the sewage. People sweep them away, plug their nose, walk on the other side of the street. Ultimately, and at the essence, they're both still ocean. And both of the paths are returning to the ocean. Gravity, which pulls water down, happens because the source of water is the ocean. And so all of the water on the earth is actually returning back to the ocean. So the, the way when we think about the jivatma, it would be the very rough and far from perfect, but we'll take it for now, analogy to the drop. The ocean is this atma, which is really all we are. 
on the, the core level, if you take the river drop or the sewage drop, there is no such thing as sewage. There's no river, it's just ocean. And yet, because of this process, which for the ocean is evaporation and wind and rain, for us, we're gonna call karma and reincarnation. The ocean has temporarily come into the form of these drops, which are now moving back to the ocean. Once they get there, that drop merges with the ocean. There's no more drop. There's not even a drop of which to speak of. That's when we talk about moksha, or liberation, not having to come back again. That's when that complete emergence has taken place. That drop could no longer reincarnate. Sure, evaporation keeps happening, but you're never gonna get the same drop. It's now merged, it's now ocean. In the same way in our lives, what's happened is this jivatma is here in this body, much like the drop is in the form of the river or in the form of the sewer. When it identifies as the river, or it identifies as the sewage. When it identifies as that, that's where when we start talking about our own ignorance or our illusion, is you've identified as this body. It would be like the drop saying, oh, I'm so great, look at this. People come and they perform my arthi, they pray to me. I'm so pure, I'm so divine, I'm wonderful. Or, on the flip side, the drop saying, I'm worthless, I'm useless, I'm dirty, I'm impure. Look, people plug their nose when they walk by me. People sweep me aside. Both of them are just two faces of the same ignorance. And when we talk about our illusion, our ignorance, it has to do with that identification. Then, coming back specifically to reincarnation. So what happens is, when I identify as this body, well, the body has hungers, thirsts, desires of the, of the actual flesh, and then we have of the mind, ego, fear, jealousy, anger. When I identify as that, I'm performing actions based on that. I feel a desire, I act on it to fulfill that desire. I'm feeling anger, I'm feeling greed, I'm feeling lust, I'm feeling, I'm overcome by my ego, I'm feeling fear, I'm feeling envy. When I act based on those acts accrue what we call karma. They go into our karmic account. And the process of reincarnation takes place until that drop merges with the ocean. And there's, there's two pieces to it. Again, I'm sure there must be a million more than two, but I'll talk quickly about two. One part of that is the experiential awareness. Not just an understanding because you read it in a book, but an experiential understanding of the nature of the self as divine. The drop understanding its ocean. It's not river, it's not sewage, it's ocean. But not just intellectually because someone said it, but that deep experiential understanding. That's what the word yoga refers to. When we talk about union, it's that union, that union of the self with the divine. When that happens, then whatever I'm doing, I'm not doing it based on my own greed or my own ego. I'm doing it as a vessel 
as a vessel for God's will. And when those actions take place, then those don't accrue karma and we don't have to keep reincarnating. But along with this, when we've lost a loved one, so okay, now we have it in the theory, but in practice, we've lost a loved one. Where did they go? Where are they? And could they come back, back to us in a different form? Absolutely. But two things are true. One is they've never left us. Because the, the essence of who they are was not in the body. It wasn't their arms, or their legs, I mean, think about it for a minute. Throughout your life, how many times have your loved ones changed form? Your parents and your children both. The form of your children that you held in your arms when they were babies. The form that they were when they were 10. The form that they are now. Well, they've, they've, changed, they've changed so many forms. Your parents, how they were when you were a baby, how they were when you were a teenager. And yet, we understand a continuity. Even though the form has changed, the body has changed, they're still here with us. The soul is there, the essence is there. That which we love is there. You don't love them anymore because they aged or any less because they aged. When someone passes on, it's a different form. And until they've come back in a phys another physical form, it's a form that we can't see. But just because we can't see it doesn't mean they're not here with us. One of my favorite stories is the story of when Paramahansa Ramakrishna passed away his wife, they had gotten married when she was very, very young. And so the bangles that they put on her wrists were very small. Her wrists were the wrists of a child. And after he passed away, it's traditional that a wife removes her bangles. But she couldn't remove the bangles because the bones of her wrist and her hand had grown so much. And so she went to get a hammer and she took the hammer and she sat in their family temple room. And she took the hammer to hammer the bangles. And suddenly his voice comes. And he says, what are you doing? I haven't gone anywhere. <coughs> I've merely moved from one room to another room. So there, that essence of them is still here whether in a, in a formless state, because they haven't reincarnated, or they've merged with the divine and they're not gonna reincarnate, or in another form because they've come back. But either way, that essence and that soul is still there. 